a lot recently because it it what? so expensive. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> oh no. What? Bro. What? Oh. <laughs> Chris Paul. So yeah. In case you've forgotten, that actually happened. And it has been a while since that trade took place, but a lot of people had the same exact reaction that we had. And it was mainly because we were all pretty much asking the same questions. Why would the Warriors do this? Now, we all knew that Jordan Poole was probably going to get traded sometime in the near future. With his huge contract extension set to go into effect next season, it was becoming more and more apparent that the Warriors were probably going to move on from him, especially considering the fact that he needs the ball in his hands. So it was becoming pretty apparent that he wasn't going to be able to coexist with Steph and or Draymond. Well, Draymond for a couple other reasons, but it was becoming more and more obvious that he was probably going to be traded. The problem came when we found out what he was going to be traded for, and that was of course a package centered around Chris Paul. Chris Paul is 38 years old, and he's about to make a similar amount of money that Jordan Poole would have made next season anyway. So why would they do this? I already made a video a while ago when the trade first happened talking about the Jordan Poole Pool side of things, but I think it's time we talk about the Chris Paul side of things because it is actually pretty interesting to think about. Now obviously, one of the first things that comes to mind is obviously the contract situation, which is something that a lot of people had talked about from the moment that this trade took place. Now when the trade took place, Chris Paul was only guaranteed $15.8 million next season, but that number was already set to become $30.8 million on June 28th if the Warriors held on to him, and that's exactly what happened. So so now the Warriors are paying Chris Paul $30.8 million next season. But the thing to keep in mind about Chris Paul's contract situation as opposed to Jordan Poole's is that this season is the only guaranteed year left on his deal. Next season is technically on his contract, but it's not guaranteed. It will only be guaranteed on June 28th of 2024. And obviously Golden State can do whatever they want with him next season, depending on how this season goes. Obviously, if they do want to keep him, they will probably renegotiate that down but we'll have to wait and see. So it does sort of make sense from a money perspective, because although he is making a lot of money next season, he does not have nearly as much guaranteed money over the next few seasons as Jordan Poole does. So it sort of does make sense in that aspect. Now, the other things to keep in mind about this move are the actual things to do with what is happening on the basketball court. And these are things that people may also think have a direct conflict with how Golden State plays. And those things are mainly pace, off-ball movement, and defense. We'll start with pace because it's no secret that pretty much over the last decade, Golden State has consistently been one of the fastest paced teams in the league and Chris Paul's play style is a little bit different. He plays more like a traditional point guard. He tends to sort of slow things down a lot and control the tempo of the game. Now, this can conflict with Golden State's play style if he was playing with the starters, which I don't think that he will be considering he's 38 years old and he's not providing nearly as much as he used to earlier in his career. The role that I can see him in is the point guard coming off the bench, as Jordan Poole used to be, but one that can control the pace of that second unit a lot better. Because you have to remember that last season, a reason that Golden State was losing a lot of their games towards the start of the season was the fact that the starters were building huge leads, and then the bench unit would come in and the lead would evaporate almost instantly. Like, it would be gone in two or three minutes. It was ridiculous. But I can definitely see him being put into that sort of role to kind of keep things under control while the starters are on the bench, because he's been consistently one of the best on-court leaders that we have seen throughout the last decade or so. But of course, his role would only make sense if he's not playing with the starters. I've seen so much talk this summer about the potential lineups that Golden State might start next season, and some of them include Chris Paul, but I just don't see that happening, just because of where Chris Paul actually is in his career. So that is a positive, but the potential negatives of this move are possibly going to be seen with his off-ball movement, although if he is handling the ball with the bench unit a lot, then I don't see that becoming quite an issue, but Golden State as a whole plays in this sort of, you know, motion system where everybody is moving, everybody's cutting, and so when you have Chris Paul, I don't see him being able to move and run off-ball that much. I would guess that whenever he's on the floor specifically, the ball is going to be slowed down. It's going to have to be because because he simply can't play like that for a whole season. We know how injury prone Chris Paul is. So there's that. But there's 
there's also the defensive side of this because Chris Paul has in fact noticeably slowed down on defense and it makes sense because he is 38 years old but it is noticeable once you look at the actual statistics last season for Phoenix the opponent points per 100 possessions did not move whether he was on the floor or off the floor even as late as 2018 or 2019 on the Rockets we would see sometimes as high as an eight point drop in opponent points per 100 possessions but that simply just isn't the case anymore the simple fact is that he is old and he is pretty much a net neutral on defense at this point now that's not bad but it's just not as good as he once was but of course in the right situation that is definitely passable now the big problem would be if he comes into the season as a negative on defense as he has had very few seasons in his career being a net negative on defense mainly a few of his early seasons in new orleans and a couple of his seasons in la so again we'll just have to wait and see going back to the positives and i feel like this is going to be sort of an underrated or overlooked part of of this acquisition until we actually see it on the court is the fact that he can run pick and roll a lot and the reason why that's so important is because you have guys like Jonathan Kaminga that are going to be the role man coming off of that pick and roll so if you put Jonathan Kaminga or a player like him or a Moses Moody to for just for an example if you put a, like players like those in a pick and roll with Chris Paul with his ability to find people that we've seen throughout his career that is going to be very very beneficial to both of them, mainly Jonathan Kaminga as a lob threat. And so I expect to see a jump in Jonathan Kaminga's production this season if he is playing a lot of minutes alongside Chris Paul, which I expect him to be. But the thing to keep in mind is that he's also not going to be alone in the playmaking department when he's going to be on the floor. Keep in mind the Warriors also signed Dario Saric, who is a pretty good passing big man, who I'd say is pretty similar to Bielitsa, or at least he's going to have a similar role to the one that Bielitsa had a couple seasons ago. So when you think about that, and then you also think about, I'm already visualizing in my head the short role that they're probably going to run Chris Paul, Dario Saric or someone, and Gary Payton the second probably. Something probably similar to what you're seeing on the screen right now, just with different players. I'm already kind of visualizing that, and so that's going to be very interesting to see. But I'm also thinking about how many Spain pick and rolls the Warriors might run this season, because the Phoenix Suns have been one of the teams responsible for popularizing the usage of Spain pick and roll in the NBA over the last few years, and it sort of makes sense that Chris Paul would kind of bring more of that to Golden State. Basically what a Spain pick and roll is, is it's basically a normal ball screen between a point guard usually and the big man, but it also has a different action going on. As soon as the big man rolls after the original pick and roll, the third player, usually a shooter, comes up and sets a screen for the big man as they're rolling. They then flare out for a three-point shot shot and there you go it is a very difficult action to guard just on its own but now imagine just picture this for a second now imagine that same play that you just saw now imagine chris paul well you, you don't have to imagine he's right there but imagine someone like kavon looney or draymond green just for an example setting the screen right here but then imagine instead of cam johnson coming off of this this is clay thompson <laughs> so you can very quickly see how many problems this can cause for defenses. And so there is obviously some variables that go into this, There's different variations that people run. But overall, I think it could be a very beneficial change to the team to run more of this. But of course, this all comes back to can he stay healthy? And at this point, there's really no way to definitively or confidently answer that question. Because we know that he has had injuries. We know that his hamstrings strings are made out of tissue paper and of course the thing that you cannot overlook the fact that he is 38 years old and so so him being able to stay healthy will probably be a pretty significant factor in how the Warriors do this year but of course if they were to lose him then it wouldn't be the end of the world because of the other acquisitions that I just talked about mainly Dario Saric but of course we'll have to wait and see everything is speculatory at this point but with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're new. Hit the bell to be notified when I upload. Comment down below what you want to see next. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.